We at Texas Tech University in the Department of Nutritional Sciences cover a big range of research uh, subjects, ranging from basic science research, clinical research, community research, and in dietetics. And the diseases that we tackle are many, but we, they include obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's, or food insecurity, inflammation, and much more. A hundred years ago, nutritional sciences played a critical role in what home economics was all about. We've moved from an educational component where uh, it was really all about teaching existing knowledge to now we do critical research within the nutrition fields uh, and also moved out into the community. So we're no longer just based on households. We're looking at uh, organizations, nonprofit hospitals and students going to work in, in those critical fields. We have several researchers in the basic science area that are working on groundbreaking research, dealing with some of the chronic metabolic diseases, such as obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. And then these are also something that the researchers in the clinical space are also doing to address these in human subjects. We started our research in this area many years ago when we discovered that a human virus called adenovirus 36 or AD36 causes obesity in animal models and is associated with human obesity. While studying that phenomena, we also observed that that virus improves glucose levels in animals. So taking a clue from that, we took a path to see if we can use that virus for improving diabetes. And now we ended up with identifying one protein of that virus, which we call insperin. It's able to improve diabetes in various settings in various animal models. So our next steps include getting more information about insperin so that we can apply for approval from the FDA to start conducting human trials. Even though our insperin can clear glucose in an efficient manner, we need to remember that this is a foreign protein. So we do not have any receptor in our body to get that protein inside the cells. Previously, when we used different genetic models or vector-mediated delivery of this specific protein insperin to animals, but for humans, we cannot use any genetic model or vector-mediated delivery of insperin protein. Therefore, we have developed a liposomal nanoparticle that contains the protein and it, it delivers protein to the target cells or tissues. To fully understand the mechanism of insperin, we are currently working on different type of cells. And so far we discovered that once this protein goes inside of the cell, it can directly activate insulin signaling pathway. It acts like insulin, but in an insulin independent manner, meaning it doesn't need insulin. That's why I think insparing is absolutely inspiring. As a PhD student at Texas Tech University, uh, my main focus revolves around drug delivery, specifically moving forward to the FDA approval of insparing. My project centers on enhancing the stability and shelf life of encapsulated E4 RF1 with the use of nanoparticles. We have also found that insparin also protects the liver from fat accumulation. This is mainly important because liver function is also a major contributor in diabetes because there is glucose that comes from the liver that actually adds to the already increased glucose in circulation that we find with diabetic patients. Therefore, the function of liver is very important. As we are studying insulin, we also find that beyond improving glucose levels, Insperin is also able to do other beneficial things for the body. For example, it reduces liver fat accumulation. So we also want to pursue those angles to see how we can position insperin for various other benefits.